Good day everyone! Welcome to Math Made Easy with Mom Bell. And if you are new to this channel, Lovely Day with Bell, please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell for you to be notified to my upcoming videos, okay? Our lesson for today is about solving routine and non-routine problems involving multiplication with or without addition or subtraction of fractions. When you say problem solving, it is the application of ideas, skills, or factual information to achieve the solution to a problem or to reach a desired outcome. And there are two types of problem, routine and non-routine problem. What is a routine problem? It is one that is typical and has a simple solution. It involves using at least one of the four basic operations to solve problems that are practical in nature. What about non-routine problem? It is more abstract or subjective and it requires a strategy to solve. And here are some of the strategies that you can use in solving non-routine problem. We have guess and test, draw a picture, make a model, make a list, working backward, looking for a pattern, and sequence. George Polya was a Hungarian mathematician known as the father of modern problem solving, did extensive studies and wrote numerous mathematical papers and three books about problem solving. Polka created this famous four-step process for problem solving, which we will also use. Step 1. Understand the problem. Sometimes the problem lies in understanding the problem. If you're not sure as to what needs to be solved, then you're going to get the wrong results. In order to understand the problem, of course, you need to read the problem carefully. Once the problem is read, you need to list all the components and data that are involved like what is asked in the problem and what are the given facts. Okay, so next is devise a plan. There are many reasonable ways to solve problems. The skill at choosing an appropriate strategy is best learned by solving many problems. Here you will find choosing what operation to be used to solve the problem and select a strategy. The next step is carry out the plan. This step is usually easier than devising the plan. All you need is care and patience given that you have the necessary skills. Persistent with the plan that you have chosen, like show the step-by-step -step solution. If it continues not to work, then choose another strategy. Okay, we also have look back. Take time to reflect and look back at what you have done. Ask yourself, have I answered the problem? Is my answer reasonable? To make a clear distinction between routine and non-routine problem, here are some of the examples. Okay, example of a routine problem. Mother bought three-fourths meter of cord for the piping of my sister's blouse. She used two-thirds of the cord. What part of the cord did she use? Okay, to, to answer this problem, let's follow the fourth step in solving word problem. First, we have understand the problem. So, what is asked? The part of cord did mother use? And then what are the given in the problem? The given facts are 3 fourths meter of cord and use 2 thirds of the cord. After understanding the problem, like what is asked and what are the given facts in the problem, we need to devise our plan. Okay, so we need to know what operation shall we use to solve the problem. So here we will use multiplication. Okay, and then what is the equation of the problem? So what is two thirds of three fourths? Okay, two thirds times three fourths equals n. And then after planning, you have to carry out the plan. Okay, here you are going to solve. So solve the problem, show how the solution is done. So, what is 2 thirds of 3 fourths? Our equation is 2 thirds times 
3 fourths equals n. And then we will apply cross cancellation method. So we have 2 and 4. The common factor is 2. So let's cancel 2 and 4. Then divide by the GCF, which is 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, and then you also have the diagonals uh, 3 and 3. The common factor is 3. So 3 divided by 3, we have to cancel plus 1. And then another, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And then multiply the numerators. 1 times 1 equals 1. And then the denominators, 1 times 2 equals 2. So, therefore, mother used 1 half of the chord. To check the answer of multiplication, we need to divide. Okay, so let's divide one half divided by two thirds. Okay, in dividing fractions, we need to copy the dividend, one half, and then change the sign from division to multiplication. And then give the reciprocal of the divisor, which is three halves. And then multiply the numerators, 1 times 3 equals 3. And then multiply also the denominators, 2 times 2 equals 4. So, 1 half divided by 2 thirds equals 3 fourths. Have I answered the problem? Yes. Is my answer reasonable? Yes. Okay, so that is how to answer routine problem using four steps. Let's have another example. Nicole earns 5,000 pesos for selling fruits in the market. She spends one-eighth of her earnings on house rent and one-fourth for food. How much does she spend on other expenses? Okay, so understand the problem. What is asked? The amount she spends for other expenses. And then what are the given data in the problem? We have 5,000 pesos earnings, 1-8 for house rent, and 1-4 for food. The next step is devise the plan. Plan what to do. How do we solve the problem? What operation shall we use to solve the problem? Okay, so we will use addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Because we need to find out what is 1 8 and 1 fourth of 5,000. Then subtract the result from the earnings to get the remaining amount which will be spent for other expenses. Okay? So the equation of the problem is 5,000 minus open bracket, open parenthesis, 1 8 plus 1 fourth, close parenthesis, times 5,000, close bracket, equals n. After planning, we need to carry out the plan. Here, we are going to solve the problem. So, show how the solution is done. And this is our equation. So, based on our equation, we have first hidden question. We need to find out what is 1 8 plus 1 fourth. So, that will be our step 1. 1 8 plus 1 fourth equals... Okay, so since our fractions are dissimilar, we need to change them to similar fractions by finding their common denominator. And their common denominator is 8. Okay, then divide 8 by the other denominator. So 8 divided by 4 equals 2. 2 times 1 equals 2. That will be our new numerator. Then 8 divided by 8 answer is 1, then multiply it by the numerator which is 1, the answer is 1. So our fractions are now similar, so we can now add the numerator. So 1 plus 2 equals 3, and then copy the denominator 8. And that is the answer of our first hidden question of what is 1 8 plus 1 4. The answer is 3 8. Let's go to the step 2. Okay, so in step 2, we need to multiply 3 8 times 5,000 because we're going to know what is what, what is 3 8 of 5,000. So let's multiply 3 8 times 5,000. 
here we need to change rule number to a fraction so how are we going to change rule number to a fraction we just need to add fraction bar and one okay and then apply the cross cancellation method so we have eight and five thousand what is their greatest common factor the gcf of eight and five thousand is eight so let's cancel five thousand and eight using the common factor which is 8 so 8 divided by 8 is 1 5,000 divided by 8 the answer is 625 and then let's multiply both the numerators 3 times 625 equals 1,875 then 1 times 1 equals 1 so our answer is 1,875 over 1 or 1,875 Okay, that is the answer of our second hidden question. So, what is 3 eighths of 5,000? The answer is 1,875. Okay? So, we need to proceed to step 3. Here in step 3, we are going to subtract 1,875 from 5,000. Okay, so 5,000 minus 1,875 plus... 0 minus 5 cannot be so we need to borrow 1 from 500 500 becomes 499 so 0 becomes 10 10 minus 5 equals 5 9 minus 7 equals 2 9 minus 8 equals 1 and then 4 minus 1 equals 2 okay so 3125 is our final answer okay therefore Nicole spends 3125 for other expenses. After showing the step-by-step -step solution, we need to look back. Okay, let's check our answer if it's correct. So, we added 1 8 plus 1 4. The answer is 3 8. And then we'll get 3 8 of 5,000. The answer is 1,825. And then we will subtract 5,000 minus 1,875. The answer is 3,125. Okay, so let's check. 3,125 plus 1,875. The total is 5,000. Okay, so have I answered the problem? Yes. Is my answer reasonable? Yes. Here is a typical example of a non-routine word problem involving multiplication of fractions. One third of Samantha's money is equal to one half of Andrea's money. Samantha has 40 pesos more than Andrea. How much does Samantha have? Okay, so let's follow the four steps in solving word problem. First, understand the problem. So what is asked? The amount of money does Samantha have? What are the given facts in the problem? We have one third of Samantha's money, one half of Andrea's money, and 40 pesos more. The next step is devise a plan. Here we are going to use a strategy. And the strategy that we are going to use is draw a model. So after planning, we need to carry out the plan. Meaning, we are going to solve the problem. Okay? So, our example is an algebra type word problem. It can be solved without formally introducing algebra. We just use a, a strategy to help us solve the problem. And the strategy that I will use is bar model. Now, I'm going to show you how the solution is done. Okay? So, I'm going to draw a bar with three equal parts. One part that is one third which represents the money of Samantha another bar which has two equal parts one part is one half that represents the money of Andrea and then 40 pesos more of the money of Samantha okay as you can see one third of Samantha's money is equal to one half of Andrea's money 
and 40 pesos more of this Samantha's money. Okay? So, if this one is 40, then Samantha has 3 times 40 is equal to 120. So, without explicitly representing any values with variables, we can easily visualize the problem. So, look, there are 5 units involved. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, the extra unit, which is this one, that Samantha has is exactly 40 pesos. And then since uh, Samantha has 3 of this, 1, 2, 3, she has 3 times 40, which means 40 times 3 equals 120. Therefore, Samantha has 120 pesos. What have you learned today? Routine problem solving concerns solving problems that are useful for daily living. It involves using at least one of the four arithmetic operations to solve problems that are practical in nature. What about non-routine problem solving? It is mostly concerned with developing students' mathematical reasoning power and fostering the understanding that mathematics is a creative endeavor. And here are some of the strategies that you can use in solving non-routine problems. First, guess and test. Then draw a picture. Make a model. Make a list. Working backward. Looking for a pattern. And sequence. And what are the steps in solving word problem? First, understand the problem. You need to know what is asked. What are the given in the problem? And then devise a plan. You need to know what operations shall be used to solve the problem. And then select a strategy. Then let number three, carry out the plan. Here you have to show the step-by-step -step solution. And then after carrying out the plan, you need to look back. Meaning you are going to check your answer. Then answer the following questions. Have I answered the problem? Is my answer reasonable? It's practice time. Okay, solve the following problems using area model. Okay, class, that's all for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed the activity. Okay, so see you next time. Have a lovely day, everyone.